Okay, today we're talking about how to basically do random objects when you click on a box. Um, also, I'll show you how to do it without clicking. So the first thing is is the, um, the box when you click on it. Let me show you the demo here and then I'll show you how I did it. So you have this question mark here and every time you click on it, uh, it's going to produce an object that's going to come down. You got a grape, orange, banana, and cherry. And each time you click on it, it's going to be different. Oh, well, it's not completely different, but it does do it randomly. Alright, so let me show you how I did this. So you got your box here, and it's not going to move right now, but um, I'll show you how that's going to work too. But basically when you click on it, it's going to make a sound, and then it's going to switch to a change box, which is this animated color here. And then it's going to, it's going to, basically I went to the add event, went to the, um, crate, and then dragged over an alarm, and then I have it set to number of steps 2, set to alarm 0, and then alarm 0, which is an add event, then I went over and dragged over another timer from the main 2 tab, set it to 2 and then alarm 0 so after 2 seconds it's going to jump back to the main box the main box is going to be this colored one here set the origin 83 to 80 so that way and then the same thing set up for this colored box 83 to 80 so that way it doesn't jump back and forth you want to make sure that the origin is in the same spot otherwise it's going to jump the image Alright, so when you click on it, it's going to switch, so that way it produces an object. But in the coded sheet, basically I have a setup to where I have a bracket and R equals I random underscore ra um, range, parentheses 1, comma 4, parentheses. So basically there's four objects that's going to produce, so 1 and 4, and then if R equals 1, you can, you don't have to have R, R is this, um, basically like, stands for random, basically, maybe you can use M, or whatever letter you want to use. So, um, it equals 1, so it could, the 1 will represent cherry, and then I say make this equal cherry, else if R equals 2, then make this orange, um, and like I said, you could have cherry B2, you could have orange B1, you just got to make sure you have these numbers in the correct order here, and each one equals something, equals a different object. So else, if R equals 3, make this equal grape, else if R equals 4, make this banana. So then A, A, D, C, A, B, C, or E, D, C, equals uh, in, instance underscore create comma x comma y comma miss make this I'm in parentheses x and y um, basically represents where it's going to be the origin is going to be located at and it's going to be uh, coming from the actual object itself which is the question mark because you don't want it to be randomly when you click on the box you don't want it to appear somewhere else besides underneath the, the question mark so that's why it's x and y there I'm going to make this, and then add ADC equals speed equals 9. So that's the speed. Um, this speed is, is not really a big deal here. This is basically um, talking about the object itself, the question mark, but I have the question mark not moving, so you really don't need this in here. You could take that out. 
and then uh, close bracket. So basically it's stating that when you click on an object it's going to randomly choose either a cherry, orange, grape, or banana. And then, um, then it's going to produce it when you click on it. This information here that's graded out is in green. I'll show you that in a minute, but um, that's how this works. So, that's how the random thing works here. Alright, and the ADC, I'm not sure what that represents. I looked this up on YouTube to get some information, but I'm not sure. I think that's just the code. That's the code for um, to make it randomly pop up when you click on the box. And then this blocker here, um, you don't really need this in here, but it it will help when you do it when the computer does it automatically without clicking on it. So basically, the I was going to have it set up where the box will move back and forth so many speeds, and then it will hit the blocker and it will bounce off the blocker and go back and forth. And that's when you don't click on it. Alright, so the grapes. Basically, I just had the depth at 3 on this one, and um, in the crate... It's going to be moving at four speed down, and then I went to add event, went to the other, and checked outside room, and then it's going to destroy. So when the object leaves the um, the room, it's going to destroy. So what what I mean by that is when the object leaves this blue box area, or it gets to this grid right here, it's going to be destroyed. Because you really don't want the objects to keep falling down in your game because um, it could basically uh, take up memory space on your phone or your device so you want to destroy it when it leaves the room and it leaves the room in this grid area so that's why I have it destroy when it's outside the room and I set it to self and I got that trash can in the main one tab and same thing with the orange well I have the depth at 4 here so it's going to be behind the grape and the same thing set up it speeds up four outside room destroys banana same thing have it set to depth five and then cherry is going to be at depth six the blocker i have um solid you don't have to have it visible but you have to have it solid that way it bounces the question mark bounces off this blocker right here so let me show you how to do it randomly without clicking on it. So basically what you're going to do is um, you're going to go to add event, make a crate, and then you're going to have it move whatever direction you want to make it go in. You can set it to 9 like I had the code set up. So when it hits a blocker it's going to bounce off and go in reverse. Got that from the move tab and it's going to be in reverse. It's going to jump go the other direction when it hits the blocker. And I have the box set to minus 5, which is going to be in front of everything else. Alright, and then in the um, the box again, instead of having it click when you to produce the object, change it to step. And then you're going to un take out the slant of lines here. And basically, get rid of all this. Okay, then it's going to state that um, num number equals i random underscore range parentheses one comma one fifty in parentheses here. That represents how, how how many times it's going to produce at what rate. If you set this to one hundred, then the objects are going to come, the objects are going to come produce more. It's going to produce more more objects. It's going to produce more grapes, oranges, bananas, cherries. If you set it to 150, then it produces less objects, less fruit. If num, um, and you have the Pac-Man sign going the right direction, equals five. This basically represents how how um, how fast it's going to produce. Um, I just leave this number at five because I've changed it to three and one, and it really doesn't do much it takes forever for it to produce something so I just leave it at five 
All right, so let me see what happens here. It should move on its own and produce the information without me clicking on it. All right, let me take out that sound because that sounds annoying. And you don't need this. Don't need this change. Well, you can leave that in there. I think it might work. Ah, oh, it doesn't work because I don't have the change box bounce off the blocker. So I'm just going to take out this change box. See how it produces it without you clicking on it. And I think it's move it's moving it's producing out the sides here because it's going too quick. So if I change this to like three. And it produces it more in the middle there. So that's basically how you do it. Um, you could um, you could have a switch if you wanted to. Let me see what happens there. Yeah, it doesn't really work that well, so I would just keep, take out the change box. It doesn't really work with change box. I mean, it does work when you click on it, but when it does it automatically, it doesn't really change the box and then produce the object, so I'll just take it out. Alright, well, that's pretty much it for this, and you probably could do this for um, making card games, stuff like that, like memory games. Um, like, if you want to choose a card, and then randomly it, it picks an object, and then next time when you play it, it randomly picks a different object, so that would be great for that. Or, if you want to make um, games where you just jump up and hit an object like Mario, collect an object, it could be different every time when you click on it. So that's pretty much what this is all about. Alright, thanks for watching.